So obviously just a quick look at Tuesday, obviously you got to play some of the young lads. Yeah. Some positives as well, Elliot Bennett back for the first time yeah. in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I said anyway we're going to use this as a development competition, certainly this year. Um, because we have no other way about finding out of some of our young players. And it, it's an incredible step for them really, you know, to go from under 18s football um, to men's football. And and against a really experienced team the other night as well, you know. But but it gave us that opportunity, and and we I would take it again, you know, for getting the scoreline. And I never want to get beat. I don't want to get beat in a small-sided game out here, so I wouldn't want to get beat. But sometimes you have to sacrifice things, and um, I don't know how we find out about them otherwise. I, I don't I don't know the answer because we haven't got a 19s, a development league. We haven't got under 21s. Um, we haven't got an under 23s, so the jump for them is is huge, and you just have to find out how they how they doing it. I mean, if you look at Declan the other night, and and you look at Josh, you know, playing centre back and playing left back. Now that might have been a slightly easier for them the other night with having Elliot one side of them and Taylor the other side. So you know that that really helped them. But I thought if you looked at their performances the other night, I thought their performances were first class. Um, I think there's some other players that could have done better and could have given me a nudge for the weekend the other night and didn't, unfortunately. But um, all, all in all, I've said, you know, that's what we're going to have to do on this competition because I don't, I don't know the answer of finding out about uh, some of our players that come up and we see, them, we see them two or three times a week for training, but we don't get to see them in matches. So, yeah, all in all... Um, I suppose what you have to look, you have to take the positives out of it, and the positives was obviously Elliot Bennett the other night um, for his first game. Um, it's funny today, but he's not he's not come in today because he felt a bit sick this morning. So um, yeah, I mean the positives of that. Hopefully that one will be okay. But um, you know that was the major positive really that come out of the game the other night. So yeah, small things, but um, we're we're pleased with how certain things went. If you know what I mean. Well, apart from feeling sick, how was he with the injury and coming back and playing, you know, 80 minutes? Well, he had to. He, he was fine after the game. He was obviously going to stiffen up and he had to go back down to see the specialist in London yesterday. Um, and it just coincided with, he didn't have to go and see him because he needed to go and see him after Tuesday night's game. He was just scheduled that he had to go and see him. So um, he's had quite a busy 24, 48 hours, Elliot. And, um, and then woke up and felt a bit, a bit sicky this morning, so maybe he picked up, I don't know, some sort of bug, but I, I, I think he'll be okay. Um, just okay for what at the moment, we don't know. Yeah, have you got a kind of time scale of when you want to see him back into league games? Um, when he plays well enough on a consistent basis, I suppose, the same with all of them. But um, look, you know, he, he's, he's a great lad, Elliot. I've known him a long time. I've known him years and years before, before I came here. So I know what he offers to the group. And I just thought the other night, I thought he was excellent in everything he did, you know, and for his first game back, you know, he um, he certainly deserves a round of applause for that. So I wouldn't want to put any pressure on him. First of all, I've come to you, and, and sorry, coming to you late today, but we had a longer training session, so my apologies for that, you waiting. Um, but uh, I haven't seen him today either, so I haven't seen him to ask him how he felt. Um, so hopefully this sickness bug that he's got is only a 24-hour thing, hopefully. And just on the topic of injuries, as Daniel Udo, has he had his surgery? How's that gone? Yeah, that's gone great. Yeah, that's gone great. Um, so I had a text last night from um, Dan Green, who'd had a text from the surgeon saying everything that had been done um, and he's got a rock-solid knee. He put in there... Um, in the text to Dan that I got and then Dan must have had a strange old day yesterday because he ended up texting me at something like I don't know quarter 12 last night that I woke up to first thing this morning um, and he said he was starving hungry so <laughs> he, he went down into theatre later and but yeah all done now so you know that little bit of a weight that we've had for him well while well, there was no swelling in his knee it's been really really frustrating but I also said to Dan you know, you know Yesterday is the start of his rehabilitation now, and um, by the sound of it, all the operation was really, really good. No meniscus tears or anything like that, which is a real, real bonus. Um, 
so yeah, we're looking forward to seeing him, but um, he's got to get home safely first and probably have a, a couple of days at home. And Aidan O'Brien, how's he feeling? Better. Um, Aidan's doing very, very well. Um, it's the same as everything. When you have a when you have an injury, you you lose muscles overnight, and if you have surgery, you lose them in hours. Um, but then it takes weeks to build them back up. And we're, we're just trying to build him up. That's where we've got to do. We've got to build him up so he's strong enough. Um, he's certainly fitter now. He's leaner. He's a lot lighter. His body, his body fats are down. He's, he's done really, really well. We've just got to get some more strength into him. And um, next week will be a big week for Aidan. These, these, I, I spoke to him this morning, funny enough, and these two days are big days for him. But they're big days leading into a bigger week next week. So we've just got to make sure we get him right, you know? We've just got to make sure we get him right. And it was the same with Elliot. And it'll be the same with Julian da Costa. Julian's the other one um, who's coming along. Um, and we've missed Julian. Julian, I, I thought when Julian started off the season before his, his injury came along, he gave us fantastic thrust when we played 3-5-2. Fantastic thrust. And, um, and we're missing that a little bit. And Christian said he got his first goal for you on Saturday. Just, are you impressed with the impact he's been having? Yeah, great. Had a, he had a really, really um, tough day on, on Tuesday, like the other boys did. Um, and I think with him, it's the same story, really. We're, we're trying to get everyone up to speed. It's, an, it's a nightmare, really, when you can't have everybody in first day. Um, They'll fit in, the other boys that have come to the football club, they'll fit in because they're good lads. But being a good lad doesn't necessarily make it that you're up to speed. And Christian needs, he needs fitness work. That's what he needs. Um, I thought last week for an hour, I thought he was excellent. And then all of a sudden, he just come down with a bump. But I think that's just lack of games. But um, really impressed with him last week. Incredibly strong. You know, you can't move him. It's like, you know, it's like trying to move concrete when you move him. Um, and he was, yeah, really good last week. And I thought he scored a great goal as well. And you mentioned getting fitness. Is it a help or a hindrance that the games keep coming thick and fast? Because you can get match fitness, but you can't then spend as much time here. Well, that's the idea when you change the team the other night, really. You know, what we needed to do was we needed to get, I felt, some fitness work into some other players. Christian being one of them, you know, another one was um, Jordan Shipley because Jordan Shipley, with what's going on in his life at this moment in time, um, sometimes the games mentally will drag him down a little bit, whereas if you free him off and just work him hard in training, he doesn't have to think too much. And I think all of that culmination um, was something we we worked out with a few of them really and, and trained incredibly hard here on Tuesday afternoon before we went off to the game. So all in all, I think it, it, it doesn't matter whatever, whatever you say and whatever the answer is, you just have to deal with it. As I've said before, we have far too many games in our country and it's all dictated to by money and finances and what can come in the coffers really, rather than player welfare. And does that worry you that players can get injured because you know you're having to play them twice three times a week you, you risk people running a fine line I think um, I think this year might be better than the other couple I have worried about that since I've been here because I've had to I think when everyone's fit we've got a strong enough squad that we can change and rotate a little bit more this year um, but it's taken until this year Whereas I do think it was harder previous years going with the same lads and then worrying about injuries for sure, yeah. And just looking up obviously to Saturday, a place that you know, a place that you've played. Yeah. Just thoughts going into that game? Well, I love Burton Albion anyway, you know, I, I, I had a great time there and um, I, I know a lot of the people, I know the chairman very well, I know Dino, I know Jimmy. I phoned Jimmy the other week when Jimmy was in the job. Um, I, I actually think that they they've been unlucky in the games they've played you know we've ended up playing a few of the teams or had to play or look to play a few of the teams that Burton have played I think Burton have played very well this year 
very well. And when they got that win last week down at Exeter, I remember speaking to Matt Taylor after the game, and you always have a conversation with who do you, who'd you play next? And they said they were playing Burton, and I, and I said to him, Burton are, Burton are decent, you know. I, I, they definitely don't deserve to be where they are in the table. Um, and that's our challenge at the weekend. And you have them old adages of you know playing teams that are at the bottom, but you know now they've they've got a win. Was it? Is it sometimes kind of glad that they've got a win because you don't want it to be against <laughs> maybe, you? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what point of view really. Sometimes you can say, well, oh, it's good that they've got a win there, but then it might give them confidence to get another one, doesn't it? So, you know, it 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 really doesn't matter. It's it's about it's about us this weekend. As I said last weekend, there wasn't enough of us in a performance last weekend and we need a performance this weekend and the result then will take care of itself but we need a performance